Are the Marvel movies complicit in pro-military propaganda? I feel like I've seen this question a lot over the years, but that it's popped up in my Twitter feed a ton as of recently because of the release of Falcon and Winter Soldier, which at the time of this recording is actually the biggest digital streaming premiere of any show of its kind. And while I'm not normally one for making long-form YouTube video essays, I couldn't help but feel I actually had a lot to say on the subject, so instead of making this into one giant Twitter thread, I thought, hey, why not turn this into an actual video like a real big boy content creator? And hey, you know, maybe if I do my job right and either entertain or enlighten you who does not normally watch my channel, maybe you'll want to stick around and see what I do on a weekly basis, talking about all these great comic books before they become the next great comic book, TV series, or movie franchise. So, first things first, what does propaganda actually mean? Well, Webster's Dictionary defines it as information, especially of a biased or misleading nature, used to promote or publicize a particular political cause or point of view. And of course, when I talk about military propaganda, what I'm really talking about is American military propaganda. Because normally the sort of person who would pose that question online about whether or not Disney or Marvel are cheerleading the military and their causes are normally themselves from America and the rest of the world just doesn't exist, eh? And let's face it, they probably haven't seen the Wolf Warrior series of military action films wherein the Chinese government helps liberate Africa and fight Frank Grillo along the way, huh? See, it all comes back to Marvel movies one way or another, but I'm getting off topic. Lord knows comics and superheroes are no stranger to propaganda, especially when it came to the rah-rah pro-American works made during World War II. In fact, Stan Lee himself was a member of the Signal Corps, and so were many other famous American writers and artists who cut their teeth, making stuff to help energize the American people and mock their enemies. Same goes for the Walt Disney Corporation. In fact, when the company's animation output was arguably lagging and not doing so great, Uncle Walt switched gears entirely to creating works of pro-America, pro-military, anti-Axis power cartoons to help keep the lights on. Now, looking back from a historical standpoint, it sure helps that they were ripping on the Nazis, one of mankind's most vile villains, though I'd be lying if I said a lot of these cartoons with the buck teeth Japanese and such are pretty damn indefensible in a modern context, something that Disney themselves have freely even admitted themselves the last couple years. Here's the thing, though, about war, and especially wartime propaganda wherein this stuff was made. Eventually, you're not always going to be fighting an evil empire bent on world domination. War is complicated, it's dirty, and lots of people get hurt and suffer even long after it's all over. So it's easy enough to understand why some people wouldn't like the idea of war and by extension the military shown in a light that glosses over all the real horrors, especially one that might make war and military service seem, oh, I don't know, appealing to young or otherwise impressionable minds like, yeah, you guessed it, colorful superheroes. With this context in mind, we can now officially really tackle the question that still stands, and that is, does the Marvel Cinematic Universe paint a flattering picture of the American military? that omits or minimizes the real harm of the American military-industrial complex? And if you were to ask me, the shortest answer I could give would be no, no more or less than any other Hollywood blockbuster does. Well, alright then, video done, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to smash that like button and check out my Patreon. I kid, of course. The answer is naturally a lot deeper and more complex. First and foremost, what a lot of people I don't seem to think understand is that if you've ever seen a tank or a jet or people in real military gear in a movie, that means the film's production had to go to the military and make a deal with them so that they wouldn't have to go out of pocket for all those fancy murder toys. This also means, and again, I feel like a lot of people are losing this in the conversation. When you work with the American military, they send someone from the Pentagon to sign off on everything you do with their stuff. And if they don't like what you're doing, or the light that you may be showing them in, they could very easily take their toys and go home. Which means if you're a filmmaker or a producer in Hollywood and you want to make the next big money-printing summer blockbuster, sometimes you gotta play the game to get your way. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, but you do have to play. Now, this is different with every movie and every production under the sun. I just find it weird that somehow Marvel and Disney ended up getting singled out for this behavior and not, oh, I don't know, the Fast and the Furious movies or mainly Michael Bay movies, which have always felt like they had a real undercurrent of pro-military propaganda to them, to me at least. 
I think the answer to that is pretty obvious, too, and that is that Marvel makes more movies and TV shows in the superhero genre, the most popular genre on Earth, than anyone else, so eventually, you're gonna see some repeating themes here. Also, unlike DC, several of the biggest heroes from Marvel are either former or current military service members or other such agents of governmental power, so, you know, yeah, the military is probably gonna come up once or twice in these stories. You know, this might also be as good a time as any to bring up the fact that I'm Canadian, which means I have no stake in the American military machine one way or the other. I've never served and have given the opportunity I probably wouldn't end up doing it. I do, however, say that I can probably count on my hand three people who I've worked with regularly on the channel who were service members at one point or another, so don't go into this thinking that I either have a bad opinion of the American military or an uninformed opinion opinion of the American military. Just maybe take it as that I have an interesting outsider, third-party perspective on the whole thing. The question for me then becomes, how do the Marvel movies actually portray the American military? Do they actually give them any sort of special treatment? Well, let's look at two examples right here. Let's start with the first Iron Man movie, the one that began it all. Tony Stark is shown to be a morally lax weapons manufacturer, happily helping arm what was at the time and still now very much an unpopular war in the Middle East. The few soldiers we do meet along the way with Tony, including his best friend Rhodey, all certainly seem nice enough, which makes it all the sadder when they end up getting killed in the line of duty just a few moments later, again showing the real danger that comes with this line of work. Tony is captured and tortured as a prisoner of war, yet another very real horror of war that the movie does not gloss over. Tony's mind is ultimately changed, and he decides to stop making weapons when he realizes the people who kidnapped him are also using the very same weapons that he sold to the American military. In fact, after Tony builds his suit, he even intervenes and saves some civilians that the American military either wouldn't or couldn't save. To me, this all feels very straightforward. The messaging is clear. War is bad. Weapons are bad. Death Death is bad. Well, except for the cool suit of armor we made, that super awesome. But not exactly anything I would call pro-war. I wouldn't exactly call it anti-war or anti-military either, but there it is. Okay, but what about Captain America the First Avenger, you might be saying? He's a soldier. This has to be war propaganda, right? In fact, it's set in the prime era of the greatest generation rah 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 culture, and honestly, I think this movie does more to dissect the idea of the military propaganda of its day. Steve joins up for the cause because he thinks it's the right thing to do, and because everyone around him, including his best friend and protector, have been telling him to go off to war. At first, the army brass positively hates Steve because he's small and weak, and so they bully the hell out of him way beyond the regular basic training stuff. Heck, if the generals and powers that be within the military had their way, they probably would have given the super soldier serum to some Biff Tannen looking dude, which actually dovetails very nicely with what's going on in Falcon and Winter Soldier right now, wouldn't you agree? And even after Steve gets his powers, which was from a German doctor no less, the American military treat him like a clown, a sideshow attraction, a living piece of propaganda to hawk victory bonds. Eventually, he decides he doesn't want to do it anymore, and that he would do more good on the battlefield. The Howling Commandos themselves actually end up fighting their own special secret shadow war with Hydra that spans all of World War II, yet is also divorced from World War II at the same time. I could really do this for all the movies and talk about how a lot of the time the American military machine is shown to either be broken or incompetent or easily corrupted to say nothing of the times like in Civil War and the Hulk wherein the military guys are straight up the bad guys. And that's even before we take a look at the movies trying to tackle some serious subjects like the topics of PTSD and the hardship soldiers have when they end up coming home for the first time. That doesn't feel like propaganda to me. That doesn't feel like glossing stuff over that actually feels like showing the subject warts and all. The big smoking gun argument that I see people come back to time and time again for why they feel Disney and Marvel are indeed running some kind of propaganda operation is this bit of marketing material from Captain Marvel trying to get young girls to join the Air Force. And yeah, it doesn't matter which way you slide it, this is straight up a recruitment ad, and I don't love it even if Carol is indeed a real Air Force colonel and this might be the sort of ad that would appeal to the character, it just does feel kind of wrong on the whole. Then again, I'm also the sort of kind of person who feels a bit awkward every time I see real-life military recruiters set up at comic conventions. We've all seen these, right? This isn't just me. This idea as plain as day that, hey, kids come to these places and they want to 
to look as cool as they can with their big Jeeps and uniforms and everything. And hey, kids, sign these papers and we can have a gun in your hand real soon. Let us also not forget that Carol isn't even a member of the Air Force by the end of that movie. So if this all was part of some, you know, military coup to try and warp the minds of young children into servitude, it didn't really work, and I would probably ask for my money back if I was them. On the same note, remember when Man of Steel ran similar military recruitment ads, and Superman's not even a soldier? I may not have liked the Captain Marvel one, but at least thematically it all fit and made sense with her character. Here it doesn't. And somehow the DC and Warner Brothers films don't get slapped with the same claims of military propaganda. I suppose at the end of the day, too, I don't really have some piffy finale planned for this video. Like I said at the top, I don't normally do video essays. Maybe I can end this by saying that the Marvel movies and their relationship to the American military is not what you might think it is, and that they are no more or less invested in making propaganda than any other big explosive summer blockbuster is. I will, however, say, though, that it's probably good that there are people out there asking these types of questions and that we are having these types of conversations because it is important that we try and pay close attention to the kind of media we absorb. And the message is there in both good and bad. If I was to take a message away from all these different Marvel movies, that would be that the military, the government, the powers that be can't possibly help you. Only our colorful superheroes with amazing powers can help you. Now, whether or not that is a positive message is definitely a topic for another video for another day.